we just talked about the defeat of Satan and we've understood that he is a defeated enemy, he's a powerless enemy. Now, out of this understanding, um, some practical things that you know will help all of us is what we are going to look at. So the next uh, section here says complete mastery. Complete mastery. So that means that we have complete mastery and dominion over the enemy. So whether it is Satan, whether it is his demons, we don't have to worry anymore, right? Whether, uh, you know, they, they have any capacity left, any authority left, or, or uh, people may say, oh, no, this demon is very powerful. That demon was not so powerful, but this demon is so powerful. Whichever demon it is, Jesus has defeated. We have complete mastery over Satan and all his demons, no matter how strong they are. Okay. So I remember once one pastor, he was sharing with me, like some of our outreach pastors, they'll share all their stories, right? So one pastor, he was sharing how he went to a house uh, and they called him and said, please come, pray for this lady, she's demon possessed and all. So he went apparently and he thought, what is there? We'll cast out the demon. So when he went there, uh, she's a very like a thin, weak looking lady. And apparently she carried the whole cot with one, one leg of the cot. She just lifted up the cot, it seems. The demon is it's kind of, you know, intimidating the pastor. The moment he saw it, he was like, oh my goodness, what will I do now? Seems like, you know, it's a very powerful demon, this and that. But the long story short, nothing. He just prayed in the name of Jesus and he cast out the demon. It can be any so-called powerful demon. Doesn't matter. That's what, practically, that is our understanding. No matter who it is. Satan or this demon, that demon. It is true that sometimes we need greater faith. That's what Jesus said, right, in Matthew 18. He said, this kind shall not come out except by prayer and fasting. What was he referring to? Faith. The disciples could not cast that demon out. Not because the demon is powerful. That's not the answer. It's not because the demon is powerful. But it's about faith, right? So if we carry that faith, we can go against any demon. That's not a problem. Okay, so uh, we should not worry about any demon. We have complete mastery. Uh, it can be the leader of all demons. Don't worry. Jesus has defeated. You can always stand and tell the devil, you are crushed, you are expelled, uh, you are destroyed, you are powerless. Okay, uh, and Jesus has won the victory 2,000 years ago. So don't try to scare them. I'm not afraid of you. I speak of the victory of the blood of Jesus. We can begin to speak our faith against demonic powers, against demons that oppress people. Got it? So we have complete mastery. Um, and uh, let's read some, some verses, very helpful. Luke 10 verse 19 and Ephesians 2 verse 4 and 6, 4 to 6. So anyone who's there can please pick it up. Luke 10 verse 19. Kidiksha is reading it. Luke 10 verse 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay, wonderful. Uh, does anyone have the Hindi version of that? Should we try? One second, Joseph, use the mic, please. Use the mic. परंतु परमेश्वर ने जो दया का धनी है अपने उस बड़े प्रेम के कारण जिससे उसने हमसे प्रेम किया लुक 10 19 लुक 10 19 देखो मैंने तुझे सांपों और बिच्छुओं को रोंदने का और शत्रु की सारी सामर्थ्य पर अधिकार दिया है और किसी वस्तु से तुझे कुछ हानि ना होगी। hmm. So it's very clear. I have given you the authority and think about this. This instruction or commission was given to the disciples before Jesus died on the cross. Before Jesus died on the cross, he's sending out his disciples and he's saying, "Okay, you go. 
you preach the gospel, you heal the sick, you cleanse the leper. So uh, it, it's like a foretaste of the power of God, which is to be released in wholeness through the cross. Before that, he's telling them, he's giving them authority. And even at that time, he's saying, I've given you authority. You can trample on serpents and scorpions. What is this trample on serpents and scorpions? Can we go around trampling? Mm. Referring to overcoming? Like overcoming. overcoming, yeah. It's all figurative language. Scorpions and serpents, it's an image. Again, that we, uh, we see over here, Jesus is trying to depict the demonic kingdom. Okay, with these words, scorpions, uh, serpents, they're nothing but demons. And he says, you can trample the way we trample insects. Get it? Uh, do we do we have to use like major weapons? Like if you see one cockroach, or something, do you like bring in your best weapons and go through some training? No, you just like maybe just trample some insect, right? Um, uh, I know it's really sad for the insect, but the point I'm trying to make is we don't worry too much because we know that we are more powerful than that insect, right? So it's somewhat like that when Jesus is saying, I've given you the authority, you just have to trample, and trample serpents, scorpions, demons. You take authority. You're already victorious. And it also says, nothing by any means shall harm you. So we don't have to worry about them, um, you know, attacking us back. Sometimes we have that concept where we say, if we get into deliverance ministry, something can happen, you know, demons will come back. They'll do this to my family. They'll do that to um, my ministry. What did Jesus say? I'm giving you the authority. Just trample. Sim it's very simple. You don't have to do much. Trample, serpents and scorpions. Nothing. What is the meaning of nothing? Nothing, right? Nothing. It means nothing. There's absolutely nothing by any means shall harm you. So how much more clearly can Jesus tell us this? You tell me. He's telling us so clearly, don't be afraid. No demon can harm you. No demon can, uh, you know, cause any problems. Of course, they will. They they may attack, and we've already seen their tactics and methods. But we can always overcome, isn't it? So it's only as much as we allow the devil to have um, power in our lives, as I think one of us also commented, that it depends on that. But in themselves, Satan, the demons have no authority. It's like trample. Just trample serpents, scorpions, nothing by any means shall harm you. So let's imagine there's a little child who is now a believer. Little child prayed the salvation prayer. They're a believer. Can that child cast out demons? Powerful demons? Thank God. <laughs> you all got the point. So that's what we're trying to say. God has already given us all authority. Nothing by any means shall harm us. So when demons come against us, don't get all flustered. Say, okay, one demon only. No, come on. You know, let's use our authority against this demon. We will overcome. So we have complete mastery over the enemy and all his demons. Now let us read Ephesians 2. Okay, I still have uh, a question. Can you just throw yeah. some light on uh, verse 20, man? Hmm. Same passage, yeah. 1020. Okay. You it's want to read it? Yeah. It says, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, mm. that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what does that mean? Luke 1020. So it, it we can notice that some of the disciples, they went and they did the work of God and they came back telling Jesus that ministry was so powerful. Okay, but Jesus tells them, firstly, he tells them, behold, I give you um, power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, all the power over there is like all the uh, authority that the enemy has and nothing by any means shall 
hurt you. And verse 20, he says, um, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So this is like, um, uh, you know, one second. Uh, okay, I'm just trying to get an NKJV version. There's another version here. Yeah, so uh, the 70, 70 people whom Jesus had sent, they came back, okay, um, giving a report. I'll read verse 18 also, just for context. Verse 18 says, I, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So here's the context. There are 70 disciples of Jesus uh, whom he sent out and said, you do the work of the ministry. Now, it looks like they did a wonderful work of the ministry with supernatural signs and wonders. Reason? Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning, meaning the defeat of Satan, like a very um, resounding defeat, okay, is, is what Jesus sensed from the ministry of these 70 people. But he's reminding them of two things here. Firstly, we saw in verse 19 that don't worry about the enemy. He can't harm. You're already victorious. Second is, we should not take or we should not place our identity in ministry. That's the whole point of verse 20. Um, you know, sometimes our identity becomes ministry. Like if somebody will not call me pastor, I get offended. No, it's just a function that God has given you know, to, let's say, you know, one individual. Other individuals have other responsibilities, the work of the ministry. We should not attach our identity to that ministry. Instead, be a very simple person, be very normal. And he says that what should I rejoice in? Yeah, we are rejoicing that mighty ministry is happening, great. But we should rejoice more in who we are in Christ, that your names are written in heaven. So my greater joy is that I'm a child of God. You know, God is my Abba Father. My relationship with God is what I celebrate more than, you know, uh, I am this minister, I do this, I do that. So that's the point over here, the emphasis. Got it? Okay, great. So good, uh, good that, you know, you noticed that scripture. So we've uh, now recognized that we have complete mastery. Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 6 is also another scripture passage that we should not forget okay so please turn to it at someone please read it out shall i go ahead sister yeah yes sister lucy ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 6 but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus wonderful so it is talking about our identity in Christ okay about God's mercy towards us his great love towards us how he um, brought us out of our sins. He made us alive with Christ Jesus. Um, and also another position, verse 6. In believer's authority, we have to remember this verse 6. Okay, verse 6, what does it say? Raised us up together, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we all know that there is this um, positional truth. Like we are redeemed. You know, we are we are uh, uh, kings, we are priests, uh, we, we are the children of God. Um, so there, there are all these positional truths about us. One of them is that we are seated with Christ, together with Christ in the heavenly places. Okay, We are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. Where is Christ seated right now? In heaven, Okay, at the right hand of the Father. What does this verse say? Where are you seated? On your chair. Is that the answer? Where are you seated? Yes, yeah, seated with Christ. 
in the heavenly places but we may argue i'm right here you know ma'am i'm sitting right in front of you i'm not in any heavenly places i'm here physically we are here got it but our position in christ where are we we are with jesus in the heavenly places what is the meaning of that you see the sitting next to uh, like if you imagine you know you think of some major um, uh, political political festival or government festival in that festival if someone said okay your your name uh, that that placard or you know that card is placed right next to the president you know please go sit right next to the president what will that mean that you're so favored isn't it you're so favored you're sitting at the right hand of the president you have a lot of authority you have a lot of influence that they are asking you to sit right next to the president okay you carry a lot of authority now think about this we are told if you and i are a child of god spiritually we are seated with christ in the heavenly places right now okay though i am here where is my spiritual position right next to jesus okay so it's signifying great authority great authority jesus has given all his believers great authority so no wonder you know he says you trample trample is what down right it's not like okay hit on top and demons will come and you just hit them on because they're not above they're not above us they're below us and you're seated with christ in the heavenly places means from there you can exercise your authority okay so we can always tell the devil you know where i am i'm seated with christ in the heavenly places from up there i am exercising my authority on you satan demons okay it's really powerful we're sitting in a place of authority i'm sitting in a place of authority and we can look down on the devil and we can say come on you know we'll just crush you trample you because that's what jesus taught us to do and that's the power he has given us is there anything above heavens above the heaven where god is seated so can you find any demons even above no 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 all are below only there's no other option they're all below okay so these are the realities that we have to settle in our hearts no demon is above god god is above every demon so to never get worried about the powers of darkness yes it is a matter of faith to be able to um, you know conquer the power of of satan but it's not a matter of authority authority we already have authority christ has already given us so we have to live with this understanding and we will be able to deal with the devil so always remember we are not fighting for victory for victory means um, there's no victory and then we have to fight uh, we have to overcome and then get the victory over satan that's not what it is instead jesus is saying okay take the crown you're already victorious you're already victorious but satan will still try to come and trouble us we are just fighting from our victory we say satan you're already defeated this is the reality you just you know you be in your place i put you in your place so we have to remember that we are fighting from victory each time we don't have to battle to get the victory you got it yes no yeah okay we are fighting from victory uh, now when it comes to protection we are already protected okay um, we saw earlier luke 10:19 don't don't uh, forget that passage it says that you know god has given us authority to trample on scorpions serpents nothing by any means shall harm us that means we are protected satan cannot um, you know cause trouble because we are coming against him but when is it that satan can can um, do you know things against us from what we are learning satan can't do isn't it that is clear why is it that he does sometimes because of our lack of understanding or because of our okay, fear good. that he is yeah fear. lack of understanding fear anything else yeah open doors okay 
so as a believer i am actually safe but if there are open doors then we can't blame god for it what are open doors they can be many 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 things it can be unforgiveness it can be um, you know unresolved matters of the heart where we carry bitterness anger envy jealousy lust so many things are there we don't deal with it and what um, happens is if you give a place then satan will come so i was just reading a little bit more about snakes okay for very good reasons and <laughs> i found out that uh, apparently they cannot make a house okay and uh, somebody and there's one particular australian variety of of, of a species of snakes which can actually kind of burrow and make a house for itself but otherwise they cannot make a house for themselves so uh, they're quite helpless in that sense so if they have uh, places like you know holes that are dug by uh, other creatures or um, we as human beings we just throw things around and it's nice shelter for them they can just go hide there then they go and they take shelter but if there is no shelter they cannot be there at all because they don't have the capacity to make a place for themselves so that is so true isn't it even about demons uh, that actually they cannot come but if we give them a place you know if there are those open doors those holes then they can easily come because something is there which will shelter them so that is the way uh, these things happen so no open door should be given to the enemy or to satan there are many passages of scripture there are five given here in our notes i'm on page 30 in the pdf version one says nothing by any means shall harm you then 1 john 5:18 i'm not reading the whole passage but just telling you the highlight of that scripture 1 john 5:18 it says that um the the you know the the child of god like he keeps himself and the evil one does not touch him so satan cannot touch us that's what the bible says as long as we are walking in righteousness um and all the doors are closed then isaiah 40, 54 verse 17 no weapon formed against us will prosper okay that means no scheme no plot of the devil will be uh, successful against us even you know uh, david writes about it right the nations came against me but i conquered it in the name of the lord i just conquered everything any enemy can come but i always overcoming because i am victorious so no scheme no plot of the devil can uh, overpower us then psalm 34 verse 7 the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him that means we also have angelic protection angels are standing guard around us and satan cannot you know demons cannot attack we can say this aloud we can declare these scriptures and say i have angelic protection god's angels are encamping around me they are encamping ab- around the place where i live nothing will touch us okay? nothing will harm us then psalm 91 he who dwells in the secret place of the most high okay so now that i'm walking so closely with the lord with in intimacy with god i'm hidden in god's shelter satan cannot touch me satan cannot do anything to me he cannot do anything to my family you know we can just sit and pray this for hours and declare that i'm safe i'm strong uh, you know i am victorious satan is defeated nothing will harm me okay so in this way uh, we can make declarations because that's what the bible says god has protected us completely but when do we encounter issues when there are open doors and we are the ones who give permission uh, for the enemy to attack us okay so seems like there is a question probably ah uh, yes shani yeah i have can you the one about um when i striving for victory or we have victory can you kind of help with how do you apply that in terms of when you're trying to overcome sickness like when you get sick and uh-huh. my other question is that there are believers that get harmed raped and stuff like that how do you how does that if we're protected why does that happen 
And like people who meditate on Psalms 9810, no place should come to my dwelling, but you still get the COVID and they believe in it. So can you explain like why do those things happen? And then the first one about the sickness. Okay, so your first question was in terms of sickness, um, how do you overcome it? Yeah, because you're saying that, you know, we have uh, victory, you know, we are, we, we're already victorious through Christ that cross. Yeah, how can we apply that in terms of if we have, if we have um, sickness, ailments in our body to try to get better? Because it's kind of hard when you've been sick for so long mm -hmm. and you're a believer and you're still bound with the same sickness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, see, as a believer, we know that in Christ Jesus, our identity is different from what it was earlier. And these are all, um, this is a spiritual position and this is a spiritual reality, okay? But then there is also um, this aspect of living it out in the practical. So both have to be there. Uh, whatever I am in the spiritual realm, I have to live it. For example, I'll just tell you, uh, if we say I am holy, okay? Uh, the Bible does say, that now that we are in Christ Jesus, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And, you know, I have been sanctified. I have been made holy. I've been made righteous. But in the life of a believer, okay, let's say a believer is, is uh, struggling to speak truth. A believer is uh, struggling to do the right thing. How do, you, how do you reconcile that? Because you're saying he's holy. Technically, that's true. Because that's what the Bible says, he's holy. But here is a believer trying to overcome this weakness of maybe speaking lies. So uh, there is a spiritual reality, but then comes in this whole aspect of walking in faith in order to receive the promises, to receive, uh, you know, to make manifest the, the truth in our lives. So then when the believer walks in faith in the word of God, in the truth of God's word, then he will overcome this weakness that he has. I'm just giving you a simple example. So in the same way, we know we are healed in Christ Jesus. But then, you know, we, we, um, we catch a cold, we feel, we feel um, a fever at a time. And it, that doesn't mean that, hey, the word is not working in my life. As long as we're here on the earth, yes, we will encounter these challenges. But then by faith, you apply the word. Okay, that's the way to receive it. So has Jesus done everything? Yes. But there is also the whole aspect of how to receive it. If everyone could receive everything, we all would have all the blessings. But Jesus said, you know, by faith, he who believes in his heart, if you don't doubt in your heart, Right? And then you say to your mountain, there are many aspects of faith that we must apply, walk in, when we receive the promises of God. Yes, it is, it is valid for all of us. It's true. Spiritually, it's true. But then there is this whole thing of walking it out, receiving it by faith, drawing it into my life. See, again, financial blessing. Take for example. We know I am blessed you know, with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Uh, scriptures uh, tell us, I think it's Isaiah 48, if I'm not wrong. Anyway, it says uh, the Lord, he, he teaches us to prosper. Okay? He teaches us how to prosper. So uh, I'm, um, what else does it say? My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. All that is a reality. Why are believers still poor? Why are believers still lacking? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There are many other things practically to apply that. We also have to walk in the wisdom of God. We'll walk by faith, but wisdom is required. The Bible talks about the hand of the diligent, right? Um, is, is what conquers, the hand of the diligent conquers. Meaning when you work hard, you can't stop but be blessed, right? He blesses the work of my hands. So if there's no work only, then what will God bless, right? So. There are many other aspects, Shani. So I'm just trying to explain to you, even when it comes to healing, we can, the main way of receiving it is through faith, but then there could also be other practical things. For example, maybe I have to improve my lifestyle, improve some of my choices to stay out of that particular issue that keeps coming back. Okay. So a pretty long answer to your short question, but I hope it hel helps you in some way. Yes, and what about, yes, it did. And what about the ones like 
if we're protected, why do people get harmed? Yeah. Or like Psalm 9110, you, you meditate on, you believe it, but you still get the COVID. No place yeah. to come to my Devin. So yeah, the that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we all we all had that uh, struggle during COVID where even, you know, some believers were passing away and we were wondering when the Psalm 91, why is it happening? Right? Same things that I said earlier. The promises of God are yes and amen. But how do we receive the promises? There are other things that come into picture. Faith, wisdom. So back then during COVID, you know, if, if a believer says, no, nothing will happen to me. I'll go, no mask, no sanitizer. So dangerous because we're not applying wisdom. Like where is wisdom? Faith is there, but we can't do foolish things, right? It's like how uh, Satan told Jesus, you jump from the, the height. Because God's word says he will give his angels charge over you. Jesus knew it's a foolish suggestion. Then Jesus said, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So we need wisdom. We need wisdom. Just because one passage of scripture says you dwell in the shelter of the Most High, we should not go and do some foolish things of exposing ourselves to dangerous um, you know, infection. Uh, does that make sense, Ashani? Yeah. Yes, but what about somebody gets harmed, like a woman gets raped or something like that? You know, we're protected. Why does that, things like that happen? Yeah, that's a hard question, actually. Um, so are you asking only about that particular inc uh, that particular example? Yeah, because Psalms 91, Psalms 91, it says you have protection, your angels protect you. So, I, you know, yeah. you meditate on that, right? And you, you yeah. speak to be protected, but then things happen, like you get robbed or yeah. somebody gets raped or, you know, something like that. So, yeah, 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 it's really unfortunate. And um, in each, I mean, each time something like that happens to answer the question of why it happened, uh, that is so difficult. That is so difficult. Um, but I mean, I, I really, I, I think we are in a fallen world and so sometimes these things happen okay uh, and, and i'm not trying to justify what what happens but they do happen and the the only way that maybe we can we can find some some strength to overcome what has happened is to um, continue in faith right continue in faith put our trust in the word of god and trust that uh, no matter how terrible you know something has taken place in our lives that we can still rise above it and God will make all things good for us. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if that's convincing enough, but yeah. It's okay. All like thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, was there a question? Yeah. Okay. A question just in, uh, in line with what she was asking. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also conclude that, you know, the issue is not with the giver's end. That is at God. It's more on the receiver's end. That is from us. With regard uh, to being applying the principles or you know in walking in wisdom so yeah. it has to do more on our end correct see because god has given everything okay but by when by saying it's at the receiver's end it's not even like you we are trying to blame the believer like if you're sick if something bad happens to you if you get robbed if it's your fault it's your problem it's not like that we're all, what I was also telling um, Shani is it's very difficult to put our finger on what is the problem. Because sometimes we could say, okay, let's imagine somebody had an accident, right? Whom do we blame? Where is Psalm 91? You know, I'm a church goer, I'm a believer, I'm a volunteer in church. How can this happen to me? But what was the problem? There can be so many reasons. Maybe my confession, maybe you know, faith, maybe um, just wisdom. Maybe I wasn't smart enough the way I was driving or whatever. Or it could be something to do with generational aspects where uh, some of the, the, the uh, elders, forefathers have made certain dedications that are open doors in my life and I had no clue about it. Okay, so, so many things are there, uh, Akhil. It's not so easy to pinpoint the issue. You can't be conclusive on one aspect. Sometimes we can be conclusive, but many times there are no answers. Many times, why did this happen? People ask the question. I would just say, yeah, I mean, 
we understand that we feel like asking why did this happen to to me but that may not be the right question because you may not find an answer for that question we can find we can try our best and if there's something to learn from that situation learn but don't stay in that question right say okay god how can i how can i move forward how can i do better okay uh, how can i continue in faith in hope those are the better questions uh, to ask to keep going ahead uh, yes yes shani so I guess when things happen that we don't understand, if we meditate on Psalm 91, 10, still get COVID, are you just trying? To, we should just kind of still believe, um, still believe the word and kind of stay in faith because it does get discouraging when you believe that things happen. So your suggestion is just because it makes a believer, you know, I don't know, if you'd be sick for a long time, like hope deferred makes the heart sick. So you're saying to just keep believing the word, to, even if, even though you're still sick or even though you may get the COVID, just still keep believing. Is that yeah, what? Yeah, because. Okay. Because you see, like if, if you take up like um, uh, John 14, 6, right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Truth. He said, I am the truth. You won't find truth anywhere else. Uh, or if you take like John 17, 17, um, your word is truth. It says your word is truth. So when God's word is the truth, we have to go by it. If, Jesus, if God says, I am Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. I have a covenant. I always heal you. He heals all. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. It remains. That is the truth. Now, I may ask the question, why didn't I get healed? There can be many reasons why. But does the truth change? It doesn't. I didn't experience because something went missing. You got it? So then uh, I have to figure out what could have gone wrong, make a change in the future and keep moving forward, even teaching others about, hey, come on, like when you believe, do this or do that, so that others can experience right, from God. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is the truth will never change. That is why we have to keep believing it, because it's the truth. OK? Experience can change. Okay, I didn't get healed. I got healed a bit. I got healed quite a bit. I'm fully healed. Experience is changing as faith is changing. Knowledge is changing. Wisdom is changing. Submission to God is changing. Experience will keep changing. But truth will never change. And that is why we have to hold on. Okay, Does that make thank sense? You. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, Sister Gertrude. Sister, I just wanted to say that even if you are believers, uh, Jesus doesn't promise us uh, no suffering, that our life will be uh, joyful always. Because Jesus himself has suffered. He was nailed. He was crucified, nailed to the cross. The, so the suffering also is a part of believers. And we triumph over the suffering through. And Lord is teaching us something through the suffering. Okay, so sister, the way we understand this is that by default, if we are on the earth, there are going to be difficulties. Okay, take a simple thing for uh, for us to consider. Um, in the summers, it gets very hot. Okay, it's not easy. Sometimes you feel like, why is it so hot? But we have a mortal body and we are on the earth. This is how things are on the earth. It's not like God is making it hot for me. God has raised the temperature to 35 degrees. God is not sitting there and, you know, like, okay, raise the temperature. <laughs> he has better things, you know. So the way we assume is that God is doing this or God is giving permission. It's not like that. As long as we are on the earth, some things are default. Whether we like it, we don't like it, we go through some challenges because it's a, it's a fallen world. It's a corrupted world. Sin and suffering is already in this world. Okay, uh, sister? Sister, I forgot your question only. What? Please, uh, would you would you just remind me that last bit? Sorry about that. I lost my train, train of thought. Why is a believer sick? Huh? You're on mute, sister. Can't hear you. Are uh, you talking to me, sister? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, I was just trying to. Oh, that, suffering, you know, suffering. 
yeah 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 correct correct Stop yeah I, i just got that yes sister so the point i'm trying to make here is when jesus says in this world you will have trouble we understand it like that okay now is it sickness that he is talking about answer is no because he paid the price for sickness then what suffering what difficulty even he faced opposition and persecution so when we talk about persecution that is one thing that jesus said that his disciples will also go through persecution opposition are we facing that jesus already said that is something which um you know he doesn't he doesn't shield us from from persecution got it but sickness it is very clear that trouble doesn't mean sickness is that clear sister yeah. yes okay. okay great great uh let's go on there are some questions in the chat here uh nadel says past as the marine marine kingdom belong to the rulers of darkness so uh, uh nadel when we looked at genesis chapter 1 and the dominion and authority that god gave he said all the creatures under the sea i give you dominion right so then they they are not ruled by the rulers of darkness uh, the way you are you are stating it yeah so i hope that answers your question then uh, what about witches and wizards are they powers or wicked spirits in high places witches and wizards um i i think they would come under the category of those empowered people those um, people who have a dominion domination you remember demons take use them to dominate uh, over large communities of people so we could understand them like that okay and uh, shekhar says i would like to add something it might be a um, neglecting the alert that we received from god i had an incident while driving bike three times god said to me there going to be an accident but i neglected i uh, didn't stop and pray for it and i met with the accident okay fine shekhar thank you for sharing that so sometimes it's our neglect we didn't obey god or we didn't listen to god so that also can put us in a um expose us to some difficulty okay great so i think we we are understanding now that basically complete protection is there but sometimes due to open doors sometimes we are not exercising our faith and and so we are not receiving that protection that god has given us so in our notes we have a few more uh, highlights and they are very important highlights it says no more court cases no more court cases uh, reason is that you know we um, there, there is this one teaching that recently came up that talks about um, what courts of heaven courts of heaven where uh, satan stands accusing us and jesus is defending us right uh, so the 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 teaching was something like every time satan will accuse us and then jesus will defend us but when we look at what the scriptures have to say jesus has already done the work on the cross he does not have to that work itself is defending us so it it's not like there is a court setting and every time satan comes he brings up something against us and then jesus comes and defends it it doesn't work like that so just clarifying that jesus has already done the finished work on the cross and satan is already defeated so there's no need to fight case by case right imagine how many cases will be there of all these millions and bazillion people and per person one bazillion cases and also we have to note that satan is finite okay he can't be at all places at all times he's causing trouble here and then he has to go up here for every court case in heaven and come back i don't think he can do that he has to be you know in one given place great uh few more things no more legal rights 
So when we say we are redeemed, it means that legally we belong to Christ. Okay. So we discuss this a lot. If some property belongs to a person, trespassing or the enemy coming in, it's not permitted. So when we pray, we can pray like that. I am redeemed. My mind is redeemed. My body is redeemed. My finances are redeemed. My family is redeemed. My property is redeemed. Satan, you can't touch. Right? You can pray like that because he does not have any legal rights on us. And no more backlashes. Meaning when we engage in spiritual warfare to assume that Satan will do something to us. It doesn't work like that. We have complete mastery over Satan. But if there are open doors, like Job, you know, he says, the thing that I feared, it came upon me. How did it come upon him? Because he feared. Fear is the open door. He feared that, yeah, it's going to happen like that. It happened. Because that was an open door. It's not that Satan uh, was able to attack him. Then also there is another concept where they say when you go to higher levels in God, there will be higher devils. <laughs> okay, so when I'm a, a younger believer, then I'll have a cert certain set of challenges that Satan, some demons bring. And I become stronger in God. Another set of demons will come. They'll be more powerful. Uh, and then it keeps going like that. So when I step into ministry, there'll be more powerful devils attacking me, right? And if I grow in ministry, then even more powerful devils. Where is all this coming from? Is it there in the Bible? Firstly, it's not there, okay? It's true that some demons, it's harder to cast them out. But always remember Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. Where are you and I seated? In the heavenly place. It's the highest place. Higher devil, higher devil, let any devil come. No, however high they are, <laughs> let them come. But they're all below heaven. Got it? And they're all under the feet of Jesus. And so they are under our feet. So don't get worried. Any higher devil, more powerful devil, it's not a problem. Jesus is already conquered. And the Bible has said it in so many different ways so that we get it. Okay? Uh, so we carry authority. And we need to learn to walk in that authority. Okay, let me just stop here for today. We will pray and close. Um, if you still have questions on this subject, we can always come back and discuss in the next class. Okay, right. So would anyone like to pray, please? I'll leave it open. Anyone who wants to pray can pray. Let's pray. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the insights that we have received and we thank you, O Lord, that you have finished the work once and for all. We pray that you will enable us to not only be hearer of the word, but also doer of your word and to have authority in everything that you have given us, O Lord. We come at ourselves and this day into your precious care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hope uh, these sessions have been helpful. Thank <laughs> you.